Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Nanam Paramam Dheyam. Knowledge is supreme. Today's module is uh, Noether's normalization lemma and its consequences. This is one of the most fundamental uh, theorem in affine algebras and we will see it has many consequences. So today's lecture I will finish the proof of uh, uh, Noether's normalization lemma which I will abbreviate N N L. And today I will prove classical version of normalization lemma. So the setup is like that. So K is always a field and A is K algebra of finite type. Last time I told K okay, algebra of finite type simply means that there is a surjective K algebra homomorphism from the polynomial ring in finitely many variables to A. Surjective K algebra homomorphism, surjective. So, this means that this A is generated by and the K algebra generated by the images of capital XS. So, those I will denote by small XS. Okay, so, the normalization lemma says, says that this is a classical version. And then next time we will see more general than this. So, with the same notation, there exist elements Z1 to Zm in A such that 1 Z1 to Zm are algebraically independent over k. This simply means if you take the map from the polynomial algebra in m variables to the subalgebra generated by z i's this is the notation for this is the subalgebra of k subalgebra of a generated by z1 to zn that simply means it is this is the smallest subalgebra of a which contains z1 to zn and this map is a evaluation map ez epsilon z which is capital zi goes to small zi algebraically independent means this map is an isomorphism K algebra automorphism. So, that is one. The second says uh, A is integral over K Z1 to Z. Integral means every element of A satisfies the monic equation over this subalgebra. Moreover, if x1 to xn 
are algebraically dependent dependent over k then this m is strictly less than m so this is what we will uh, prove today uh, to prove this i will need one uh, key lemma which has also independent interest so let us first let me prove the lemma we will prove this after we finish the proof of the lemma so the lemma we need is k is the field and suppose i have a non constant polynomial f in several variables k x1 to x n non constant then there exist a k algebra automorphism of the polynomial algebra k x1 to x n to itself k algebra automorphism such that it fixes the last variable let us give it uh, give the name for this this is phi phi of xn is xn and this given polynomial f becomes monic in xn f becomes f looks like a some constant time xn power d plus f d minus 1 xn d minus 1 plus 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 f1 x plus f0 where this fj is where this a is a non zero constant i will use this notation for non zero elements of the field k cross and this fj is r polynomials in y12 yn minus 1 where this yi is this is for any j j is from 0 to d minus 1 and y y is are nothing but images of capital x is under phi this is for i equal to 1 to n minus 1 so it's very simple that given any non constant polynomial in several variables we can make it monic in one of the variable by changing the variables and when one say change of variable that simply means under automorphism sorry 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 no but f f is here no see the same f here okay so uh, after proving the lemma we will see something more about the automorphisms and and this one. so let us prove the lemma first so proof proof of the lemma is very simple let's see so i claim that there exist natural number of positive integers gamma 1 to gamma n minus 1 such that 
so i want to give automorphism so i just have to give values on x i such that they are surjective such that uh, y i which is phi of x i this i want to define it as x i minus x n power gamma i and i is from 1 to n 1 to n minus n. so if i define phi like this phi of x i is this and of course x n we want it fixed first observe that this phi is an automorphism that is simple because once you only have to prove it is surjective because surjective the algebra of homomorphism will also be injective because both these are Noetherian rings and surjective homomorphism from a Noetherian ring to Noetherian itself is always injective that you must have seen in the first course of algebra. So if you have not seen please check that. So it is clear that xn is in the image and once xn is in the image each x is in the image therefore it is clearly automorphism. So phi is clearly key algebra automorphism of k x1 to x n and now we just have to check that if I plug it in in this f if I plug this uh, y i is x i equal to I will write x i equal to y i plus this and just plug it in f and we will check that then f becomes monic in x n. So let us do it quickly. So that is very easy. So f is a polynomial. So f is a finite sum of monomials. So f is therefore summation summation is running over finite uh, monomials so a, a alpha x alpha and alpha are finitely many finitely many indices right so alpha is in this where this is a finite subset of n power n this is a finite subset and these a alpha are elements in k cross and we standard notation we use x alpha means x1 alpha x1 power alpha 1 etc etc xn power alpha n that is the standard calculus notation okay so now uh, we have we want to put xi equal to yi plus xn power gamma i or i equal to 1 to n minus 1 So this will become, this f will become summation alpha in this capital alpha, a alpha and that x1 power alpha 1, xn power alpha n. So this will become summation alpha in this a alpha, x1 I will put y1 plus this so y1 plus xn power gamma 1 power alpha 1 etc etc last but one term is yn minus 1 plus xn gamma power n minus gamma n minus 1 power alpha n minus 1 and the last here is xn power alpha n this is what just plug it in till now so when you expand by binomial what will you get the coefficient here so uh, when let us put a degree gamma degree of a monomial x power alpha this is the weighted degree where we you give weights to uh, x1 
gamma 1 and x n minus 1 gamma n minus 1 and last one is 1 x n as weight 1. So, this is gamma 1 alpha 1 plus 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 gamma n minus 1 alpha n minus 1 plus alpha n this is the weighted degree. So, if you do that if you then if you expand it so I want to choose see we want to show that there exists gamma 1 to gamma n minus 1. So, I want to choose so choose gamma 1 to gamma n minus 1 let us I want to give this abbreviate this, this is let us call it omega alpha. So, for each alpha in capital this we put omega alpha equal to this expression if you like that is called the gamma degree of the monomial x alpha and I want we choose gamma 1 to gamma n minus 1 such that all these omega alphas are different for all alpha beta which appear in this polynomial and different alpha. So, this is what we have to justify. So, this is possible because what we do is for example, take gamma i to be g power i where g is bigger than all the components of all the alphas which are appearing here. So, this where g is g is bigger than supremum of this is a finite alpha j such that alpha which is alpha 1 to alpha n which is in alpha and all g. So, in this capital gamma only finitely many tuples appear and they are finitely many components and I choose a natural number which is bigger than everybody. So, now this if you look at this expression, this expression this will be a geodic expansion. So, when I take gamma equal to g power i that omega alpha looks like I will write this term first alpha n plus alpha 1 g plus 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 alpha n minus 1 g power n minus 1. So, these alphas are much smaller compared to g. So, they are nothing but the geodic g digits. So, alpha n alpha 1 alpha n minus 1 they are g digits of omega alpha. So, when to if omega alpha equal to omega beta then their digits will be equal, but then alpha will be equal to beta right. So, we can always choose because there are finitely many uh, components. So, therefore, in this expression in this expression only one maximum will come because all the all the monomials have different degrees this gamma degree. Therefore, only one this finite set and all elements are different. So, when you compare only one will be maximum. So, that means there exist unique alpha which is alpha 1 to alpha n in this with d equal to omega alpha is maximum. Here gamma varies in no alpha varies in this capital alpha. So, therefore, when I plug it in you write f will look like that coefficient of that maximum a alpha and then uh, y uh, x n power omega alpha 
plus now the lower degree terms. So the, that will be summation J. J is strictly less than omega alpha, and some coefficients that I will call it F J S and X n power d minus J, where F J S are now you see if you see this expression, when you expand it, you will get Y S, and those F J S are the polynomials in Y S. J is from zero to d minus one. So that is what we wanted to prove. It became monic in X n with coefficients have changed, but again those y's are uh, again polynomials in X n. So that proves the lemma. G. This one, no. All all alpha J's, all the components of alpha where alpha is varying in that finite set. No, G is a fixed. G is a fixed, bigger, very big natural number. Hmm. Oh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So that proves the lemma. Now let us come back to the uh, the proof of the uh, normalization lemma, classical. So proof of N N N. So what do we want? We want to find elements z1 to zm such that they are algebraically independent and a is integral over the subalgebra generated by z1 to zm. So this I am going to do it by prove by induction on n. Remember n is the number of algebraic generators for the finite type algebra A. So, if x one to x n, are algebraically independent, over k, then we have nothing to prove because I will take m equal to n and z one to z m as x one to x n. They are algebraically independent, and Then a is integral over a. That is obvious. So if x1 to xn are algebraically independent over k, then the assertion is trivial. Simply take m equal to n and z i equal to x i. So we may assume. They are not algebraically independent. That means they are algebraically dependent. So we may assume x1 to xn are algebraically dependent over k. That means there is a non-zero polynomial in n variables. So when I plug it in the variables equal to these elements, when I substitute, then it becomes a zero polynomial. So that is there exists non-zero polynomial f in n variables x1 to xn such that f of small x1 to xn 
and this is zero. Okay, so I have this non-zero polynomial and non-constant actually. Obviously, it has to be non-constant. So non-constant. So this polynomial, I'll make by by using lemma, I will by using the automorphism, I will change it. I will make it monic in one of the variable, monic in the last variable. So that means by lemma. we may assume that f looks like some non zero constant xn power d plus fd minus 1 xn power d minus 1 plus 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 f1 xn plus f0 where these fjs are polynomials in Ys, y one two y n minus one, j is from zero to d minus one, and y j s are y j s are the changes or images of that those x s. So when I plug it in now small x s, this becomes zero. So I multiply by a inverse of f of this is a non zero constant x1 to xn this this is zero because f of x1 to xn is zero on the other hand when i plug it in what do i get this a inverse i cancelled it so it becomes monic in xn small xn so small xn power d plus now this um this capital y is There are polynomials in x s, so I can substitute in this small x s. This I will call it y j s. There are the elements in A. So we we'll get here f d minus one small y one to y n minus one. x n power d minus 1 and so on f not small y 1 to y n minus clear so these coefficients are in the sub algebra generated by y 1 small y 1 to y n f j s evaluated at small y 1 to y n minus 1 there are actually elements here so and this x this this satisfy monic xn satisfy monic equation over that so this simply means xn small xn is integral over k y1 to yn minus 1 this is six so we have a here and a is generated by small x1 to xn is x1 to xn which was k y1 to yn minus 1 and xn and xn is integral so this this contains k y1 to yn minus 1 and this xn is integral over this so therefore this extension is integral because it has only one extra element and that is integral so this is integral extension uh now you see i am going to apply induction to this induction hypothesis to this new algebra which is finite type and generated by n minus 1 elements as an algebra so by induction by induction hypothesis there exist elements z1 to zm in this k y1 to 
y n minus 1 such that see what was our requirement I just want to show you nnl such that they are algebraically independent z1 to zm are algebraically independent over k and k y1 to yn minus 1 this is integral over k z1 to zm this is the inductive hypothesis. So, the, we have checked that this a is integral over this and this is integral over this. So, by transitivity of the integral extensions a is integral over see a is integral over k y 1 to y n minus 1 and this is integral over k z 1 to z m. This is integral and this is also integral. So, this one is integral. So, that is what the second requirement and just one thing that uh, by induction this m is less equal to n minus 1 so which is less than m, strictly less than m. So, it through the moreover part also you see moreover part is I will just bring it here moreover part is if x 1 to x n are algebraically dependent then that m is strictly smaller than m. So, that comes here.